Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. I want to bring you this little short video here about communication. And what this video is going to be mainly about is um, what I feel like you should program into your radio as far as the frequencies that you can monitor and possibly use. Um, and Because I see a lot of videos about how to do it, you know, how to go through the chirp software or do it manually with the key uh, pad there on the radio but um, I have the Beofeng UV5R it's very popular and it's one of the probably the most popular radio out there for preparedness survival you know general communication and all that so I've not seen really any video out that had suggestions of what they thought people may should put into their radio so I thought I'd make a little quick video about that a couple caveats real quick I am far from an expert I, I've learned a lot in the last couple years I don't claim to be an expert in radio communications ham or any of that um, this is just my personal opinion if anybody uh, if I misspeak in this video and you want to make a correction and you know your stuff and you're an expert in the field of, of communications feel free to put that in there and, and let me and I, then I'll actually annotate where the correction was made uh, if I misspoke or if I do misspeak during this video um, I'm pretty sure what I'm going to tell you is is, is pretty accurate so I just want to get that off the table um, the other caveat I'm going to give you is what I'm telling you as far as what to put in this radio some of these frequencies may be illegal to use to transmit now you can legally listen in other words monitor any channel I'm going to tell you about you can't sometimes transmit because of certain restrictions in other words ham you need a license GMRS you need a license FRS you may not be able to transmit on this particular radio even though you don't need a license because of the restrictions of the radio in other words it's got a detachable antenna or it's too high wattage GMRS may be borderline because of the wattage situation so you have to research all these things and figure out what's legal and what's illegal to actually transmit everything I'm giving you is legal to monitor any channel is legal to monitor if it can go into this uh, radio if it fits within the frequency band that this radio is capable of monitoring the um, one thing uh, like marine for instance marine I don't know all the restrictions on the radio in particular if it has to if it can have a detachable antenna in the wattage and all that however marine is supposed to be done on the water so you can't put in marine frequencies on here and then use it on land um, so keep like I said there are restrictions with all this um, but again with emergency communications and, and I could say a crap hits fan situation without rule of law any of that monitoring the radio is going to be more important than any talking you would need to do now also you can transmit in other words talk on the radio legally during an emergency situation now again that's going to be some gray area what's what's an emergency what's not uh, that's going to be some you know legal area that uh, I'm not real sure how they're going to determine what's legal and what's not obviously you and your buddies using these out deer hunting is not an emergency unless somebody is dying uh, but somebody's stuck up with a four-wheeler calling and saying hey I'm stuck with a four-wheeler come down here and get me I don't consider I don't think the FCC is gonna look at that as an emergency so keep all that in mind guys um, and I'll tell you the, uh, the the a lot of the FCC the ham, especially ham radio operators it's kind of a self-policing situation where if somebody is getting on there and illegally using these radios they will find you they have ways of doing triangulation based on your signal that you send out because every time you uh, hit that talk button you're sending a signal out and they can triangulate and find you um, and they're pretty good about policing themselves and turning it in and it's a, and I you know I've heard all kinds of rumors as far as the fees and, and all that uh, but you know ten thousand dollar kind of fines and stuff so just keep all that in mind so what I'm telling you is um, everything I'm telling you today you can legally do as far as monitoring so people wonder what should I put into my radio once I get it and and I hear that a lot or at least uh, I was kind of inquisitive about it and I couldn't find any so good suggestions and somebody brand new to prepping or survival and, and emergency and preparedness and all that they may not really understand what they need to put in so that's what this video is about so 
The first thing I would put in your radio as far as a list is GMRS and FRS. And GMRS and FRS are the two common frequencies used that you see where people go out and buy what I call the bubble pack at the big box stores, those radios. Those usually are GM GMRS or FRS radio frequency radios. And so again, you can use this to monitor. So if your buddies around you or neighbors or anybody else have those little bubble packs, and a lot of people do, because they bought them for their kids camping or they bought them for hunting or whatever, they're gonna be communicating with those two frequencies, uh, those uh, two bands, which is FRS and GMRS. So I would highly suggest putting those in. MERS is another, M-U-R-S, that's another uh, frequency or band I would put in. Uh, those channels, I uh, put those in there. Those are more used for businesses. Um, in other words, Joe the Plumber, Radio and Back, you know, between uh, uh, trucks and stuff like that. But MERS is another good one, and Marine's a good one. Uh, Marine, a lot of people illegally use Marine uh, frequencies, like for hunting, for instance. You'll hear maybe bear hunters that are running dogs and stuff. They'll use the Marine frequencies, and they shouldn't. Um, it's supposed to be done, again, on the water. But if you're near water, definitely have Marine, uh, the Marine bands put into your radio. So you got FRS, GMRS, MERS, and Marine. There's four uh, that you need to look at at all the, ch the frequencies that are available within that, uh, that bandwidth that they have available. So once you get to that, then you want to, to me, I want to monitor emergency services. So if, if you're in a certain county or a certain city, you need to have those into your radio. Now, they may operate on frequencies that you can monitor with this, they may not. They also may have some uh, trunking uh, situation where it's, it's kind of privatized, if you will, where you can't monitor it. Um, so you'd have to research that and just see what's available uh, to monitor in your radio. Now, if you have a railroad, usually the railroad system has it, airports have it, um, have radio systems, the um, emergency services, fire, EMS, police, sheriff, any of those will have it. Um, now, another caveat I want to give you real quick. If you decide to program these into the radio to monitor, especially emergency services or any uh, services like that, um, your airports or any of that, there's a free, there's a uh, section on the keypad, but it's easier through Chirp software where you can block that from any transmission. In other words, if somebody accidentally grabbed your radio, you lost the radio, or you actually bumped your radio, the key on it, it would not transmit a signal. I highly suggest that you do that. Matter of fact, if, if you get caught with that radio with that open, there's a good chance that you may get in some trouble with the local law enforcement. In other words, you had it in your car and you got stopped for, say, a traffic ticket, and they said, hey, what kind of radio is that and you say oh it's my whatever radio and they say let me see that and they can actually click the button and transmit they may actually charge you with that I don't know again that's that's up to local law enforcement and the local laws in your area but if you you're going to be much safer having that feature blocked uh, through the chirp software is it, it you'll see it once you learn the chirp software there's plenty of videos about the chirp software which is what I highly recommend to put into these uh, used to uh, program these radios um, so keep that in mind guys the uh, other thing that you need to look at is your ham frequencies look on um, in chirp when you uh, go to the top there's a section where you can click on it's I think it's under the radio section and it actually has um, repeater book which is a source for this information already in that software so it can actually you can it can narrow it down per county and everything else so that's a good way and the chirp software is actually pretty smart so if I punch in the to put that frequency that I found in let's say you know so-and-so county and it'll actually fill in the rest of the blanks in other words any um, other things that need to be filled in to be able to use that to communicate so that's one way you can also look them up on the internet to figure out what frequencies that are in your area that are available through like say the repeaters or any of that so you want to be able to monitor local ham communication also because a lot of times in emergency situations ham operators during even let's say 9-11 when it happened ham operators were used uh, a lot and and during like wildfires uh, out west ham operators are used frequently and you'll be able to monitor what's going on because um, what they'll do is they'll use ham operators to go out and be almost like scouts, if you will. They'll go out and monitor certain areas and they'll report back and say, 
you know that uh, they're um, uh, there's you know the fires doing this or, or whatever the kill the winds are blowing this way um, because keep in mind local law enforcement their radios only go so far um, because of the way the towers and the repeaters are all set up so I know um, there's certain times that uh, in an area um, a deputy sheriff may not even have a signal in certain parts of the county where a ham radio operator may have that because they've got a better system set up believe it or not so just keep that in mind you want to be able to monitor those um, then you uh, want to look at um, weather get all your weather uh, programmed in and what I normally do on the repeaters let's go back to how I program mine I'll do the county that I live in and surrounding counties whether that be the emergency services or um, uh, now if I don't if I'm starting to eat up all my 128 what I would do is go back and say okay what's the most important do I want to uh, monitor law enforcement in say a neighboring two neighboring counties or do I want to monitor um, you know, fire and EMS, whatever the case may be. So start prioritizing when you start eating up your 128 channels. Because uh, it, believe it or not, you can use it up pretty quickly if you um, are working uh, to put them all in there. Uh, so prioritize that. And then the same thing with your repeaters, like your ham uh, repeaters. I look at surrounding counties and where I may need to go or where I could maybe hopefully find some information if something was coming up the interstate or, you know, some issue or some whatever. Hopefully I can hear what's going on neighboring uh, up the, you know, area there near me. So that, those are the basics what I would do. Um, the other thing I would do is I put together this radio communications book. Um, I just went and got me one of these little cheap, I don't know, they're 3 or $4. And then I just went and got these clear cellophane uh, style inserts. And what it did is I put every channel that I have um, in it, print it off, and you can do that through Chirp. And then I have... Other frequencies, because if the grid's down and you can't get access to the internet to find out, or you don't have a copy of a repeater book, you can actually print off all the repeaters in your area, and they've got it different, uh, you know, 900 megahertz and all this other stuff. I've got the GMRS frequencies, so I can know uh, by just going back and referring this, the FRS frequencies, and it also tells you the GMRS, which one has a repeater uh, uh, availability, which don't. I have that in here. Then I have uh, like the emergency services in surrounding counties in here, their frequencies, and then I also have um, step-by-step -step guides of how to program the radio and then um, I've got a couple different versions of that some one was like a little short version called Beofeng UV5R uh, on the fly key keyboard uh, programming um, so I just got a couple of those so I can make sure I can do it. I've got the 10 codes. You can find 10 codes that are used in your area. 10 codes meaning what the usually law enforcement, EMS, and fire uses. Um, so that I've printed off those, so I'll have those. And then um, I'll have, uh, like I said, all the other radio frequencies in the different areas. I'll have uh, maybe some that I am not have in here, but I will potentially may use. Um like some of the uh, emergency services also have the law enforcement and um, the um, uh, military uh, alphabet uh, which is like a alpha b bravo c charlie would be military and um, usually that's military and air you know uh, uh, any type of um, air communications that sort of thing then law enforcement would be like a adam b boy c charlie d david so i've got those i know all those but i at least want to put them in here for somebody trying i'm trying to teach somebody they'll have this book here to go by i also have morse code even though that's not a requirement in <coughs> the ham license excuse me guys ham license anymore I at least want it uh, to have access to it and understand what it is and how to read it so uh, anyway, that's uh, like I said, I would highly suggest you put together one of these books, um, just pull stuff off the Internet, copy it, put it in these silver thing, these little clear uh, things here and then uh, radio communications. Then also on the 10 codes, <coughs> I've got a little laminated card here. I shrunk it down, made it kind of small, stick it in a pack. I can stick it in my sun visor um, so I can at least read, uh, you know, if I don't remember a 10 code what it is, um, I can go back and look, you know what uh what they're saying uh so i don't want to miss something if they're you know hey a riot's happening oh well what's a riot well that 10 code's not used that often 
Um, so I may go, what is that? And it actually is 1044 is the 10 code in my area for riot. Um, so again, I, they, that's so frequent, uh, infrequently used. It's just not used that often at all. Um, and they said, you know, possible 1044 in progress. Well, I'm like, what is that? And if I didn't have this on hand with me, I may not know even what it is. And it's actually a riot, which I would want to know that. Um, but anyway, put together one of these little cards, laminate it, um, and then get you a book. And like I said, that's kind of what I would do, guys, as far as the how to program your radio, or at least what to program it with. And that'll get you a good base of uh, being able to monitor what's going on in your area for emergencies and anything like that. So guys, I appreciate you tuning in. This video went a little longer than I wanted, but I just think uh, we had some pretty important information here. If you got any questions or anything like that, please post those below. Again, if you find something I misspoke about, please correct me. Be glad to, uh, I want to give out accurate information. Again, I don't claim to be an expert in radios or communication. So uh, just wanted to uh, bring you what I had uh, researched and kind of what I do. But as always, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be bringing you another video in the near future. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.